Israel says it is prepared and on high alert in case Iran retaliates for the killing of a senior Iranian general and six other officers in an airstrike in Syria last week. The April 1st attack on the Iranian embassy in Damascus marked a major escalation in the violence that has been spreading through the Middle East since the Hamas attack of October 7th. White House Press Secretary Karin Jean-Pierre says the United States remains committed to maintaining Israel's security. Obviously, we've seen the threats uh, coming from uh, Iran, and so we have made ourselves very clear where we stand in supporting Israel's uh, security. That is ironclad. That's not, that does not change. France has warned its citizens against traveling to Iran, Lebanon, Israel, and the Palestinian territories. And German airline Lufthansa has extended its suspension of flights to Iran amid the threats from Iran. Joining us now is Nader Hashimi, professor of Middle East politics at Georgetown University. Professor, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for the invite. Well, since Israel's attack on the Iranian consulate in Syria, there have been growing fears of retaliation. Uh, is it the best thing to see this happen for Israel to broaden the war? Do they, are they wanting to do this or was this a limited strike? Well, I think it was very much the former. And um, I would put um, my finger on the, the figure of Benjamin Netanyahu, um, not Israel as a whole. Um, Netanyahu is in a very precarious situation right now. Uh, we're into the seventh, seventh month of the war in Gaza, and he has been unable to defeat um, Hamas. It's unclear when this war will end, how it will end. Uh, the humanitarian crisis goes from bad to worse. Uh, there's a lot of international pressure and scrutiny on Israel. Uh, domestically, uh, Netanyahu is very weak. Um, he was the prime minister at the time when the October the 7th um, attack came. And so it's widely believed that when this war in Gaza ends, his career will be over, he will be blamed, and he has outstanding court cases. So I think the only way he survives this is by trying to expand the crisis and drag the United States into it, hoping that um, when all is said and done, he can claim perhaps some military victory in the region, which he can then translate into some sort of political claim that will keep his career going. Now, Iranian, Iran has spoken harshly of this and said they will retaliate. Do you see that happening? Well, if Iran doesn't retaliate, then it sort of invites more Israeli attacks. So is, Iran is going to have to retaliate. The question is, how will it retaliate? My reading of what's um, coming out of Tehran is that they don't want to escalate this. Um, I don't think they're able to fight a war with Israel or the United States. They realize Netanyahu and Israel are in a very difficult situation. They're getting a lot of bad press. Uh, but at the same time, they want to send a message that Iran has capabilities that they can hit back. So we have to see what that all means. I suspect they're going to try and hit some target in a measured and careful way to send a message to Israel and the United States that Iran um, um, you know, has the ability to, uh, to strike back, but in a way that doesn't uh, escalate into a wider regional war. Would it be something similar to what we saw in Iraq, their response there? Yeah, if you recall the last time there was a crisis of this nature in 2020, when the United States assassinated Iran's top general in the region, Iran responded a few days later by firing missiles into American military bases in northern Iraq. Didn't kill any American soldiers, but many were injured. And that sort of sent a clear message um, that Iran has those capabilities. The, the challenge for Iran is that they don't have a lot of easy targets, Israeli targets, that they can hit. And if they try and hit any Israeli targets in another country, that risks disrupting relations uh, with that country that are hosting Israeli diplomatic or commercial facilities. So um, that's the great unknown here. But I, I suspect um, Iran is going to try and uh, do what I just said, demonstrate capability, but trying to do it in a measured way that doesn't risk an all-out war. And is that a good sign for everybody else involved? Does that allow them to breathe a little, realizing that maybe this wouldn't expand? Iran is taking a more cautious approach? I think so, because, you know, we are on the, you know, the edge of an abyss here. Um, the region, uh, oh, because of the war in Gaza, is um, is deeply broken, deeply fractured. We're, 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 it seems like we're, we're always, you know, just on the edge of a, a major war. And so if Iran tries to hit back in a disproportionate way by, for example, going after targets uh, on Israel or within Israel, that's going to escalate things. That's going to likely draw the United States in. 
uh, and then you know all bets are off. So I think this um, somewhat measured tone that we're hearing from Iran and also from the United States, the United States was sort of taken aback there. They've been sending signals right from the beginning after the Israeli strike in Damascus that uh, Israel didn't give the United States warning. Uh, they didn't know about this. They're not involved in the killing of these senior Iranian generals. So they're trying to de-escalate things as well. Um, Iran and the United States want de-escalation. What's interesting here is that Netanyahu does not. And that's the um, that's that's what's driving this region at this moment toward a broader regional war. How does this affect what's happening in Gaza right now? Well, it somewhat is, I mean, it's deeply connected because all of this is, I think, a byproduct of uh, the war in Gaza, the catastrophe in Gaza, um, you know, the atrocities in Gaza. Um, I think Iran is very much aware that it wants to keep the global spotlight on Israeli uh, policy in Gaza, which, you know, the world court has described as a plausible genocide. They don't want to shift the spotlight onto Iran itself, the regime, its atrocities and its regional destabilization. Um, uh, which is, I think, what Israel very much wants to do. And so I think this is part of the, you know, the, the back and forth that's happening between um, uh, Tehran and Israel at this moment. Uh, but, you know, this is fundamentally a crisis that flows from October the 7th and the aftermath of the October 7th attack and this, um, you know, and this sense that we don't really know how this war is going to end, when it's going to end, and whether it's going to spill over into a broader regional war. That's, where all, that's what we're all waiting to see. Can anything good come out of what is happening right now? Could this lead to talks down the road, or is this just still going to remain a mess? Uh, I don't see any hope in the short term, perhaps in the long term. Because if you, rec if you recall what the general mood and view was in the United States, in the West, and in Israel, and in many Arab capitals prior to October the 7th, the general view was that the longstanding suffering of the Palestinians, their dispossession, their plight, really didn't matter anymore, that that was a thing of the past. Uh, we could just, the world could just move on and, you know, focus on other issues in the context of the Middle East, you know, normalization agreements between Israel and its Arab neighbors. Now there's a sense that the core longstanding um, theme that has destabilized the Middle East for, you know, much of the history, um, post-World War II history of this region, the question of Palestine and, and, and Palestinian suffering and the future prospects of Palestinian uh, national rights is now uh, back at the top of the international agenda. And it's gonna force the international community, force Israelis, force the Arab states, force the world to deal with this issue. Uh, but we're still early on in this particular phase of this conflict. Um, but I think this new focus on the question of Palestine, the question of a Palestinian state, the question of equal rights for Israelis and Palestinians and their ability to live in, together in peace and prosperity now is not going to go away anytime soon. So I think in that sense, there is some hope, but that's a very much a long-term hope. And it really is dependent on, you know, effective leadership in major Western capitals and also among Israelis and Palestinians. Professor, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.